I just, like, I don't think it really matters who you vote for because in the end, like, it's all the same anyways. It just seems like I'm voting for the lesser of two evils. I don't, I'm just kind of, why would I vote for something that I don't completely support? What do these four students have in common with more than 60% of Canadian youth between the ages of 18 and 24? The answer? Not a single one of them voted in the 2011 federal election. This means less than 40% of young Canadians voted to form our current government, a stark number when compared to the 68% of voters over the age of 45 who cast their ballot. Why aren't young people voting? What's keeping them from exercising their democratic rights? There must be a reason. Uh, 18 to 22 really don't see voting as a worthwhile activity. Uh, the relevance of the election itself, uh, the fact that from their standpoint anyway, there's very little change uh, after election, one party is much the same as the other. Probably the reason why they don't vote is because they're not engaged. They're not engaged in the system and somehow we have for we have forgotten some way to communicate there or that there's apathy that uh, basically it's possible that this generation doesn't value the vote as much Now that we know why young people aren't voting, what can be done to change it? With only two out of five young people voting in the last election, what would it take for politicians to earn those extra three votes? Have young people more informed and kind of have a certain focus towards youth and just younger people in general, and I think that would kind of get them involved and kind of being able for them to see from their perspective how it affects them. My best option is to spoil my ballot because I'm often choosing between people that I don't know based on their face that's been provided to me on a poster rather than actual information about what they're going to do for me as a young person. Julian Kilfoyle, who originally comes from Western PEI, is a board member for Apathy is Boring, an organization looking to increase voter turnout among young people. She says getting youth involved in politics as early as high school may be the key in encouraging the next generation of voters to go out to the polls. Well, the research shows that it's really crucial um, that as soon as the first time you're eligible to vote, that you do so. And often if you don't vote that first time, you may never vote again. But are schools doing enough to educate their students on the importance of voting? We went to Morale Regional High School to find out. It's pretty minimum. Uh, like we hear about it and if we read the newspaper or watch TV, but the whole getting involved in it is... is not much. Yeah, it kind of it kind of seems that way just from seeing things around and stuff that it would more towards like older people that can actually vote aside from people that aren't like really at the voting age yet. So uh, there's a global issues class and that probably talks about politics, but I'm not in that class. In years past, uh, we've talked to a few politicians about possibly coming and speaking here at the school. And they were willing to, but you knew they weren't really excited because they wanted to spend their time focusing on someone who is eligible to vote. Even though these, you know, the students are very, very close at high school, they're not quite there yet. So, you know, come election time, they want to focus their time on those that can vote and not those that, you know, will be in the future. So. But why all this worry? Why is it so important for youth to be voting? I believe there have been studies that have shown that if more young people voted, Stephen Harper would not have the majority he has today. And if you don't like Harper, which is a kind of a generalization to say, but it's fair to say a lot of young people today certainly aren't the biggest fans of Stephen Harper, if you don't like Harper, that was and there will be an opportunity for you to actually do something about Stephen Harper. I think there's a large degree of um misunderstanding of what a vote can do, of, of how important it is that we vote. I do feel that when you vote, you do make a change, even if it, your one vote does seem kind of like it doesn't matter in the long run.
you're, you're not losing anything by going out and taking a minute out of your time to vote, and you could really be making some positive change. Some countries have found their own ways to get youth to the polling stations. In Australia, voting is mandatory for all eligible voters. Could such an idea work in Canada? You are, in theory, uh, obliged to both uh, enrol to vote and to vote at every election. If you don't vote, you get a letter in the mail asking you why you didn't vote, and if you don't come up with what is perceived to be a valid reason, then you get a $25 fine. When, when uh, opinion poll surveys are done, most Australians are in favour of compulsory voting. Our elected representatives, they're not representing a lot of people because a lot of people are not voting. That you know, It may be that we have to force change, and maybe force changing is to make it mandatory. But not everyone likes the idea of compulsory voting. Is it the way to go? I'm not really convinced it's the right way to go. To be very honest with you, people, like I said, are motivated to vote when they feel a sense of duty to vote or when they feel engaged with the political system. Mandatory voting isn't the only possible solution. How is it possible in 2014, in a bill that deals with how we can vote, was there absolutely no discussion of online voting? Some people believe online voting could be the key to getting young people more involved. It would just make it so much easier if someone could just turn on their computer and someone was like, hey, vote. And they could just quickly do it in two seconds because we know so much about computers that we can do anything on it. So it would, it would improve voting. I think it definitely might help voter turnout. You have to take accessibility into account. I mean, maybe getting out of your house in the morning is harder for some people, depending yeah. on what your what your abilities are and what your schedule is like and things like that. There are always going to be people who are going to get left out of traditional processes like that, of going to the polls. Young Canadians, they live online. If we let them pay taxes there, let them vote there. Islanders could be voting in two important elections in 2015. A federal election is scheduled for the fall and a provincial election could be called within weeks. Will politicians hear your voice, respond to your concerns? They won't if they think you won't vote.